Thank you for the introduction. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Profit, Automatic Patch Generation by Learning Correct Code. And this is a joint work with uh, my advisor, Martin Reiner, uh, at MIT. So every program contains bug. It would be nice if we have a patch generation system that automatically fix bug for us. So let me first introduce uh, how st state-of-art patch generation systems work. They typically start with a buggy program and then try to parse the program into ASC trees and apply mutations to generate a, a search space of a candidate patches. And then for each candidate patch, it will use a test suite of inputs to validate them. And not surprisingly, many of those uh, candidate patches will just uh, fall and then the patch generation system will be able to reject the, those candidate patches. But however, some of those patches will actually succeed. Well, past test you. The question is, are all of those patches correct? Well, the answer is no. Because the test suite is typically incomplete, there will be incorrect patches. Not all of them are correct. And some of, uh, only a few of those patches, the past test uh, suite are correct. So the question is how to recognize correct patch among them. Or, in general, how to recognize correct code. Well, the answer I'm going to present today is uh, really simple. I'm going to learn what correct code looks like and then use that to recognize correct patches. Certainly, there are a lot of correct code out there. We can, uh, we can get a lot of correct code by crawling websites like GitHub, SourceForge. And we built a system called Profit, a new patch generation system that learns from correct code. And what well, we've uh, learned from correct code is get a probabilistic model of code correctness and then use that to generate patches. So with its model, Profit account map to generate correct patches for real-world software defects in large applications. This actually differentiates Profit from many previous patch generation system or program repair work that only evaluated on small programs or uh, artificially injected errors. So the key insights of Profit are the following. Correct patches share universal features that hold across applications. So we found that we can learn universal features from one set of applications and then apply that the learned knowledge to another set of applications. Those features, those useful features, typically capture interactions between the patch and the surrounding code. That means that to learn useful information, we should not just focus on the patch code itself. By looking at it itself, does not tell us whether it's correct or not. We need, to under, we need to look at the interactions between the patch and the code. So Profit learns those universal features and, uh, to get a probabilistic model of code correctness and applies this model to recognize correct code. So let's go to an example here. So here's a code snippet, uh, here is a code snippet of uh, a real PHP bug. In this code snippet, it contains, um, it contains a buggy uh, condition. So this condition is incorrect because uh, the struct ISOSTR may need initialization even if ISOSTR len is zero. So, so, but the condition only checks ISOSTR len. So, when, so there will be cases that ISOSTR does not get a necessary initialization. So if we take this code to a patch generation system, it generates search space with mutations no doubt there will be useful, uh, useful patches in the search space. For example, this one, which change the condition by joining an additional class, which checks ISOSTR variable. This patch is, in fact, correct patches for this case, and it is semantically equivalent to the later developer patch. So the question is, is this the only patch in the search space? The answer is, of course, no. So we will have incorrect patches in the search space as well. Mutations may consider a check um, an irrelevant global variable, HD, uh, HT, instead of an ISOSTR variable. Or even worse, they may just insert a cost statement, exit zero, before the uh, condition and then terminate the execution. So what will happen if we take those uh, incorrect patches and feed them to a test? It turns out that those two patches are incorrect but they are incorrect in different ways. The first, uh, the exit zero patch, 
will fail the test cases so that a patch generation system will reject them. But we still need to pay the time to compile the program and then run the test cases on them. However, the patch that checks this global variable HT will pass PHP test suite in this case. Why it will pass? Because while checking the HT variable uh, is just acts like a lucky flag that it will allow the PHP program to identify just the in input in the test suite and then uh, make its program pass that specific input. So what do we want here? So ideally, we of course want to avoid wasting time to testing incorrect patches because uh, there will be hundreds of thousands of patches in the search space. Also, we will like to have a way to identify correct patches among many incorrect patches that pass test suit. So in our experiments, uh, in, our, in our experiments, hundreds pass, uh, patches pass test suit, but only one or two are correct. So what we are going to do about it? Let's put the correct patches and the incorrect patches uh, that pass test suit side by side. So what a human developer will say for those two patches? Well, the left patch checks the local variable that is uh, passed as a call parameter in the current statement. And it may be written by previous call. On the other hand, the right patch checks a global variable that is never used in the function of our original code. So just by looking at those interactions, a human developer may conclude that the left patch makes sense, while the right patch does not make sense. So the left patch is much more likely to be correct. But how we are going to extract the features, allow sit build a system to extract features, to so summarize those useful interactions. So here is what Profit does. Profit runs a straightforward AST static analysis to extract atomic characteristics for each program value. This includes, uh, for example, the type of value, the trait of value, whether it's a constant, local, global, or the operations and the type of statements it involves. Then once it gets this uh, set of uh, this characteristics, it will define features to track the co-occurrence of characteristics in the patch and in the original code. Let's back to the specific example we have. So for this correct patch, for the program variable, program value ISOSTR, the characteristic in the patch at least include, it appears in a Boolean condition that is checked by patch. So for here, for simplicity, we just say I, it is checked. OK. So if we look at the characteristics in the original code for ISO STR, at least it include, well, it is the call parameter first. It is address taken before. And also, it is a pointer type and it's a local variable. None of those uh, characteristics, atomic characteristics will be powerful enough to tell us whether it's a correct patch or not. But we can combine them together to form a co-occurrence pairs by looking at uh, them in the patch in the original code. So here we will get four pairs. And each pair is pretty expressive right now. For example, first pair means that the ISSPR is checked by the patch and it is passed as a call parameter in the original code. So is this enough for us to learn across application and then uh, identify whether it's a correct code or not? Unfortunately, still no, because it contains too many, uh, it contains too many uh, syntactic details. Different applications may use different variable names. So unless we restrict ourselves into uh, learning from the same application, we will not likely to have, uh, to observe the ISOSTR variable again. So what do we do here? To obtain universal features, Profit abstracts away syntactic details like variable names, function names. So to, just to comment on that, I'm not saying that uh, function names or variable names are completely useless. I'm just saying that in this case, uh, to obtain universal feature, we need to abstract them away. It might be possible if we can uh, have a fancy normalization techniques to instruct the information out of them and also allow them to effectively encode fe uh, features. That uh, is a, a future work. So after we abstra abstract them away, uh, the meanings of the co-occurrence pairs change. So now the first pair right now means the patch checks a variable that is also passed as a call parameter. So now you can see that we can uh, go over the code corpus to observe, uh, to just check whether each core patches has this feature or not. 
and then learn over them. We can do the same feature extraction algorithm on the incorrect patch. And here, we will at least get the fact that, well, it checks the global variable. So if we learn over a large corpus of correct code, Profit will be able to identify, hopefully, that the first two pairs of the left patch corresponds to positive features that often occurs in the correct patch. And the first pair of the, the, first pair of the right patch corresponds to negative features that rarely occur in correct patch or even often occur in incorrect patches. So with this learning information, Profit will be able to prioritize the left patch over the right patch. So the question is how to learn from a big code database. At a high level, Profit learns a probabilistic model where the model parameters are feature weight from the code databases of revision changes. So for each revision change, uh, there is a buggy pair and a, a, there's a buggy code and a, a fixed code that, is a, that apply to the developer patch. So to learn uh, over it, Profit just first generates search space for the buggy program as if it is trying to fix the program. Then it will identify the patch in the search space that corresponds to the uh, human fix in this case. The learning algorithm then at a high level will just try to find a model parameter that assigns the reference human patch a high probability score. To generate the candidate patch search space, uh, Profit runs a standard error localization algorithm to identify potential program st uh, statements to modify. So here it uh, returns a ranked list of program statements that uh, correspond to the possible root cause <laughs> of the defect. Then it applies mutations to generate candidate patches uh, for, each, uh, uh, for each program statement identified. Profit right now runs uh, on the same search space as PR, which applies uh, many statement distance one mutations, for example, change a condition, insert statement, replace an expression in a statement, et cetera. So here is a formula that a, a Profit used uh, as its probabilistic model. It assigns probability score for each patch in the search space given a defective program. It just has two main parts. First, it has a geometric distribu distribution that encodes the error localization rank. Second, it has a standard log linear distribution based on the extracted features and the model parameters. So for patch, the model will encode both the error localization results of the modified location uh, and the extracted feature of the patch. To, turn, uh, to learn the model parameter given a training database, Profit applies the maximum, uh, maximum likelihood estimation to, uh, get the, uh, to get a model parameter theta by maximizing the uh, likelihood of observing training database D in the given model. To put everything we discussed together, once uh, first profit learn a populist model, then for a given buggy program, it will generate search space of a candidate patches and use the learned model to rank the candidate patches in the search space and feed them one by one to the test suit and to generate patches. So this is how profit works at a high level. Let's talk about experimental results. So we, to train Profit, we collected more than 20,000 revision changes from eight large C open source projects. Well, we excluded those revision changes that cannot compile because we need to parse AST3, that, uh, that are not defect fixes, or that are outside Profit search space or PR search space so that we cannot help to uh, help our ranking. Then in the end, we used more than 700 revision changes to train Profit. The total training time is less than two hours. And uh, note that to evaluate the ability of profit to learn across application, we intentionally exclude the revisions from the same application uh, when we're doing training. That means that if we are trying to apply profit in a benchmark to fix a bug from an application X, we will exc exclude revisions of X during the training. So we evaluated the profit on 69 real-world defects from eight large applications, including LibTeef, LightHDVD, PHP, GMP, GZIP, Python, Wireshark, and FBC. So this is the same benchmark set as evaluated the many previous patch generation systems. We run profit on each defect with 12-hour limit, 
and we compare the results we get from SPR and the two, random, uh, two baseline implementations. The random implementation uh, uses random patch validation order at all. So they don't do an, any learning or any algorithms to rank them. Baseline implementation use only the error localization information to determine the order uh, without learning. And uh, the previous system, SPR, you knows that it uses a set of uh, uh, human encoded rules to uh, rank the patches. So it does not use learning also. To evaluate the profit, we analyze the each generated patches producing our experiment. This means to determine whether it's correct or not. That means we analyze the root cause of defect and also check the later developer patches so that we will know whether it's correct or just the incorrect patches that are past test suit. Know that all patches in our experiment that we think are correct are in fact semantically equivalent to the later developer patches. So the questions I want to answer with our experiments, how many defects for which profit generate correct patches? Know that those defects are real world defects that occurred during the development. Here are the results. So the blue bar shows the number of defects for which the system generated correct patches in 12 hours. And the green bar shows the number of defects for which the first generated patches of the system is correct. We see that a profit is able to generate uh, correct patches for 18 defects. And for 15 defects, those patches, the first generated patches is correct. This is a very good result. It's actually an excellent result, considering the fact that the profit uses the same search space as the PR, which contains uh, 19 defects, uh, uh, which contains correct patches for 19 defects. So the probabilistic model already helps profit to close to its upper bound. Also, profit out of performs uh, the manual set of the rules in SPR and the two baseline implementations. Two previous patch generation systems that we evaluated on this benchmark, AE and Genproc, suffer from search uh, space and search algorithm problems, so they only generate correct patches for two and one defect, uh, respectively. So I just want to give you guys more uh, uh, examples about how profit patches looks like on real world defects. So here is a profit patch that is generated for a free uh, FBC, free basic compiler. It has a bug that uh, when length is zero, the mem copy will crash. So profit add a condition to make sure that the length is zero here. The later developer patches change the same thing. It also changes an additional thing that it does not matter at all because uh, in that place, the length will not be zero. So this, uh, the chain to length less than one to left length less than zero is, uh, 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 is not important. So those two patches are semantically equivalent. Well, this is certainly not the only patch that can pass the test suit. Well, there is a simplified AE patch that simply removes the assignment of uh, depth and length uh, variable, which uh, will pass the test suit. But it actually makes the program to access uninitialized variable, and certainly it is incorrect. Also, this is the first of profit patch that uh, generated for, F, uh, for a PHP program, which uh, the bug is it will emit a redundant error message. So profit just add a check to avoid this uh, error message being emitted. PHP developer patch is the uh, same. It checks against the macro, but this macro here, BPVAREIS, is just a three. So those two patches are semantically equivalent. Well, this is also not the only patch that can pass test suit. So we can have a patch uh, that uh, just to check if it's a three, return from current function. It will pass the test suit in the PHP. But certainly, this is not the correct patch here. So to conclude, well, we present a new patch generation system profit, which extracts universal features for the interactions between the patch and the original code. It learns the probabilistic model of code correctness. And it, in our experiments, it outperforms all previous patch generation systems. So we do believe that learning from correct code is the very promising directions for solving many programming language challenges, such as uh, challenging problems, such as program repair and synthesis. And the profit is just a, a first step in that uh, direction. So thank you very much. I'm ready to take questions. Hi, um, Paolo Bielik, ETH Zurich. 
So very nice talk. Um, it seems that the key uh, part of your system is the features you designed, which are used to train the probabilistic model of the code. Uh, but there are other parts, like for example, you have to localize where the bug is and, and other things which you didn't really discuss in, in your talk. But if I look at the results, what in your experience would be the key things to improve in order to cover more bugs and maybe cover them more efficiently? Okay, uh, so I focus this on, uh, I focus this talk on feature extractions uh, because I do think this is a really challenging and a new part in this and it's a key contribution of this work. And a lot of uh, the, for example, localizations are, we use uh, standard techniques that uh, have been discussed and studied by many previous patch generation systems. But I agree that the patch generation system is actually a very, is a, is a huge engineering effort to build one, so it needs every part or every component to work uh, together. But uh, here this work, we uh, emphasize that learning from correct code or works with, with a probabilistic model uh, of co code correctness well, indeed, improve all those systems' uh, ability. So that's uh, why I think it's, uh, and uh, the hardest part is how to uh, encode the programming language uh, inside of those features into the machine learning system. So this is why I focus on that. Yeah, so can you just quickly say how important are designing good features? For example, if I design different set of features, how good the system will perform? Oh, this is a very, uh, this is a very nice question. We actually, uh, in our experiments, we actually tried to exclude part of our features. So if we, if we take out part of the features, we will see that the performance of the uh, profit system downgrades. And uh, if we uh, take out, for example, if we take out all the uh, abstractions that uh, we discussed, then the performance of profit will be actually uh, worse than the uh, human uh, encoded uh, SPR systems. Just, uh, you, you can tell that uh, the define the right set of feature, especially with proper abstractions and looking at the interactions, is very critical for the system to work. Alex Chainland, Drexel University. Um, so you said that when you're training profit, you exclude patches that wouldn't be generated as part of the search space. So what kinds of patches are those? Like what sorts of problems does this not fix? Oh, so we, we exclude, so here just to, this is a very nice question. So I think uh, here just to make it clear, we exclude, when we train, when we apply profit to uh, application X, we exclude revisions from of X from the training just because we want to evaluate profit's ability to learning across applications. There is no problem to prevent us to using those revisions. Actually, you might get, get profit better. We just want to evaluate the profitability of learning across uh, applications. Okay, so theoretically, it could look at any. Yeah, you could look at those, and this will probably give you more power because that will have more localities on those kind of problems. Thank you. Yeah. So you, uh, Michael McDougal, Gramatech, you kind of approached the, my question, but so you excluded training on the data from the same application that you were trying to repair. Um, did you do experiments where you actually use that data for the same application and does it Im improve your results? Um, so we have, haven't uh, done that because uh, uh, this needs some sanitizations. So this is a problem in our collective benchmark set, so it was a training set, because uh, uh, we've observed that there are some, uh, uh, there's, there are some simultaneous updates of those uh, the same patches that are in different branches. So there, those patches are uh, recurring bugs that are in different branches. So we do not want to